In this video, I will discuss the concepts of process, control, and job control. So most of the material I'm going to be uh, deriving, um, referring to in this uh, is from a book um, that I would strongly recommend by uh, Bryant and O'Halloran. Um, it's called Computer Systems and uh, uh, it's, this is from chapter 8 of the book. Um, so let's understand what we mean um, by process control and job control. Um, we know how processes get created. We looked at the fork system call, um, the XX system call. And the general idea is a process is an entity with a process ID. So when we think of a process, a process um, for us is, uh, is um, it, it has two aspects. One is the OS uh, aspect of it and the, the memory, uh, the, the process uh, location in memory. So the OS uh, concept of it is what we call as the process control block. And the, the in-memory uh, view of it is where, where the process is somewhere in memory and uh, its code and its, uh, its stack, uh, sorry, its heap and its stack are stored um, in memory. And, uh, and we, when we are executing, um, we're going to be uh, stepping, stepping um, one step at a time in the code, right? So, so this is the picture that we've already presented from a previous uh, in other in other videos that I already did. So so what we know is every process has a PID. So by what we mean by process control is what can I what can I do uh, to a process once it's already launched. So control process control is uh, process control is. Things one can do to a process once launched. And typically uh, what we what we uh, use, uh, at least from the command, from a command, uh, uh, from, a, from the shells, shell commands for for uh, interacting with a process are typically we can get the listing of the process there's a ps which gives us a listing of the process and we can also send signals so this ps or top will just give you a listing um, and 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 we can send signals to a process um, uh, so from the command. So for example, if I if I found out that this process has a PID of 32, 372, let 377, let's say, then from the shell prompt, I can say something like kill. Kill is used to send signals. Uh, kill is not to terminate a process, but to send signals. One of the many kill commands you can give options is to actually terminate the process. So we saw this um, I, and I can give what, what the signal name is, uh, the signal minus with a signal. Either this can be either a number uh, or it can be a, a, a name and you can say who you want to give it to. So for example, I'd say 377. So this is interacting with the process. Now the other things that we can do from, from the shell um, are we can interact with it. So the other interaction we can do is, uh, is keyboard interaction. So for example, if the, this process was launched, let's say this process was some, some program that we were running um, so if it were some program that we were running, uh, we had launched this, let's say this is a pro let's some program. If I had launched it from my command prompt and say it was a program that is run, running for a while, I can do things like control C, which will actually behind the scenes, what it's really doing is it's sending a signal also, send a sig int signal to the process. We can also do something like control Z, which sends a sig 
the stop sig stop signal to it. Right. So these are these are things we can do. What we'll see in just a second is um, is that these actually are uh, have a six this way of interacting with a with a with a process using the keyboard um, kind of blurs the line between process control and what we call as job control. So. Uh, so that's that's as far as process control is concerned. So let's let's take a look at what we mean by uh, by uh, process control from a programming standpoint. So so that's from what we just saw is from the shell perspective. From a from a programming standpoint, programmatic process control um, is is really about about two things, we wait and we send signals. Wait and wait um, if which responds to an exit and kill which sends a signal. Now, kill is also a system call. So let's take a look at what, what these two are. So um, here, is, here is wait. Let me shrink this guy down a little bit. Here are here's how wait works, and uh, here's how how signal works. So let's look at how signals work. Um, well, actually, let's just talk about wait first for now. So when you have a when you have a parent that creates a child using the fork exec method. So it launches a child using the force exact method. Um, the child, once it runs, it has a main and it's it continues to run at the main. At some point, the child is going to do an exit. Let's say it, it does an exit with a minus three. Let's say now that's just its exit code that it it issues. So the parent typically will at some point in its code, it's going to wait for the child to finish. So it performs a wait and it passes some sort of a, it's a pointer, a point, integer pointer that it passes. So let's say this is my status, the status I want to get, it performs that operation. So what, what happens in practice is this here is a blocking call, which means the operating, the, the process that issued the wait system call is going to block um, and it's going to wait until the a child process that it's waiting for is gonna un uh, is gonna do an exit. So so in essence, what will happen is this this one will be put on on uh, on hold. Uh, it and and eventually when this process exits, um, this exit will will cause the parent to unblock. If the parent is is has done a wait, it's perfectly possible that a parent doesn't do a wait. But if the if the parent does do a wait, then it unblocks. So when it unblocks at this point, the variable status will have a value which is minus one. Now it's perfectly possible that you have launched two processes. So there's a process you process you launched a process A uh, with a PID let's say of uh, three. 32 and another process at some point also was launched and this process is a process B and it has its own main, uh, main and it has its own exit and let's say he has an exit value and I'm just going to make this up let's say he has an exit 4 now and he has a PID value of let's say uh, 46 so now the question is who when I do a wait and I don't say who I want to wait to which one will I get? Well, it all depends on who quits first. So, assuming that the 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 one that finished was the was process A, then this would what this is what we'd get. But however, if the one that finished first was this guy, then what I would get is a status value of four. What is more, wait actually also returns. So wait also returns. A PID. So if I actually did took the steps of looking for, if I said CPID equals, then I would get in the first case I would get CPID equals thirty two, and in the second case I would get a CPID equals forty six. So 
So in essence, I can get both the, the, the exit status of the process that terminated and also which process terminated by using wait. Now, uh, this in some way, some, some sense, wait is a wild card way. That is, wait in a sense is saying that you want to, you want to wait, wait on any child. So it doesn't matter which child, I'm going to wait for any child to finish. Now, there's another alternative to wait, which is the wait PID. And what wait PID does is it allows you to wait. This one is it's a selective wait. And what is more, it has other nice options. Um, so, so in essence, what wait PID allows you to do is, is one, it will allow you a wait on a specific child. So, uh, you can by by specify specifying the the PID, you're gonna be able to wait for a specific child, right? So that is that is one of the first things that way this wait allows you to do. Uh, it also lets you still you still get the exit status, which is the second parameter. Um, so the th the the interesting thing is is uh, about about this though is the most interesting thing is that it also so let's call that b uh, give me a second so let's call that b this is the more important part which is that it allows you it allows you to provide options and these options allow you to specify whether you want to do a non-blocking call, so the no hang says it's non-blocking. That is, you just check if if somebody has exited. If somebody has exited, then get the exit status, but don't block. Or you can ask to be informed. So this one says that I want to unblock even if the child stops that is not just normally wait will unblock so it'll cause an unblock only on an exit right the wait will unblock only on an exit but this one says that even if the child were to be stopped and stops and we'll we'll see what we mean by stop um that is a child received a signal which is a t-stop signal where if the way the child is being suspended if it stopped then i want to be informed um you can also be be even more uh even more uh, specific and say that if the child is continued, if the child is resumed, unblock even if child is resumed after a stop. And this is typically done by when the child receives a signal, which is called a sig continue, continue signal. Uh, this one is the SIG TSTP signal, right? So, in fact, what is interesting is you can actually combine these options. You can say, for example, the options field here can be set to W untraced with a pipe uh, because it's R or continued. So, so now that we understand how wait works, let's take a look at how kill um, how how we can send signals programmatically. We we kind of looked at this in an in an earlier video. Sending signals programmatically, as opposed to from the command shell, programmatically, and we do that by by using the kill system call this is the system call kill as opposed to this is a system call kill as opposed to the shell call shell uh, routine kill um, and and all it really it tells us is that you are interested in sending uh, so, so this is the who 
uh, you want to send it to and what signal you want to send it to. And if you do a man um, seven on signal, or even um, if you were to do a, 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 a kill with the, from the command line with a minus H, you can get all the um, all the signals uh, that so you know the numbers and also know the numbers uh, numbers and the symbolic names for them, right? So 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 that is to send a signal from from a programmatic standpoint. But processes can also register uh, their interest in handling signals. So this, um, the other call, relevant call for that is, is the signal subroutine. This, this system call allows uh, a process, allows a process to uh, establish its its disposition towards a signal. So by disposition, I mean, how does it want to react when a particular signal occurs? Um, so the, the simple ones are actually sig ignore. If you want to ignore a signal, not say all signals can be ignored, but if a signal can be ignored, then you simply specify the handler to be that. Or you can say sig default, which is whatever the default uh, thing is, for example, if you don't do anything with the con uh, with a signal sig int, which is control C, uh, the program simply quits. So that's what a default disposition is. Or you can actually uh, register a callback. And when we register a callback, for example, you'd say something like on the signal, you say. Uh, if I want to, if I get a sig int, let's say, which by the way is the signal when a process uh, gets a control C, uh, when you hit a control C, a process receives a sig int signal. You can say on a sig int signal, I want to do something like a routine. I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to call this routine do. And do is would have been defined as a void do. Uh, int sig number and I can write whatever I want. Maybe I just put a statement here that says printf uh, just say do, right? So what will happen now is because I overrode the default um, uh, disposition with an explicit disposition which says which says I want to execute this routine, uh, it's going to use that routine. Now, uh, the proper way to do it is actually put a star in front of this, but I'm not going to worry about it. But that's the general idea of a signal handler, right? So this is also sometimes referred to as a signal handler. So do it becomes our signal handler. So one can also register signal handlers. So all this has to do with process control, right? So that is processes can be can be uh, uh, can be looked at uh, processes can uh, can be uh, can can be sent signals and processes the exit status of a process can be reaped uh, so in fact the term reaped which i sh uh, which which is uh, which is used a lot in in uh, the unix world what it means is um, to reap to reap is uh, a child's child's exit status is to get the exit status through a a wait or a wait PID call. So we use the word reap and if I use the word reap from here onwards that's what I mean by 